Democratic leadership on a collision course as the party struggles to decide on a path forward in the wake of the Mueller testimony. The House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler pushing for impeachment. We are going into court and asking for more information and for, to enforce our subpoenas. We are telling the court that we are doing this uh, not just as part of normal oversight, but also because as part of our Article I uh, authority and, and responsibility uh, to consider all remedies, including possibility of articles of impeachment, and that's what we're going to do. Now, whether you call that an inquiry or whatever you want to call that, it's what we've been doing and we are doing and will continue to do. Manu Raju is live for us up on Capitol Hill. There have been some developments today, Manu. What's the latest? Yeah, very significant development. The House Judiciary Committee announcing this new lawsuit to try to get the grand jury information from the Mueller investigation. But that is really not the headline here. The headline here is they took a pretty significant step towards possibly moving towards an impeachment proceeding because what they are arguing in this lawsuit is to that they need this information, this grand jury information from the Mueller probe, in order to decide whether or not to recommend articles of impeachment against the president of the United States. That is cited in their lawsuit. And Jerry Nadler just announced that moments ago. I asked him, are you, is there a difference in the investigation that you're having right now than what an, a formal impeachment inquiry is? Is there any difference whatsoever? He essentially said they're in effect the same thing. He said there is one difference in impeachment proceeding. He said an impeachment inquiry is just geared towards deciding whether or not to formally recommend articles of impeachment. He said this is a bit broader our investigation, but it could lead to a recommendation of articles of impeachment. A significant announcement there by the House Speaker, by the Judiciary Committee Chairman, who has privately been pushing to move forward on impeachment proceedings, but he's been met with some resistance from one person in particular, Nancy Pelosi, the House House Speaker, who believes the current course of action is correct. Fight the issues in court, decide later on whether or not to move forward with formal impeachment proceedings. And when I asked her earlier today whether or not she is simply trying to run out the clock, as some Democrats believe, given her resistance to opening up an impeachment proceeding, she denied it, saying she's not trying to run out the clock. No, I'm not trying to run out the clock. Let's get sophisticated about this, okay? We will proceed when we have what we need to proceed, not one day sooner. And everybody has the liberty and the luxury to espouse their own position and to criticize me for trying to go down the path in the most determined, positive way. Mr. Mueller said the other day, confirmed, confirmed in the public mind that the president has obstructed justice. You know what he said. He could have exonerated him. He would have, but he didn't. But he was not able to investigate the president's finances, personal business or otherwise, and that is what we are doing in the courts. But Democratic sources tell me, Brianna, that the speaker actually signed off on that language in the lawsuit saying they need this information to decide whether or not to move forward with an impeachment proceeding. Brianna. And Manu, uh, the speaker and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, obviously a very vocal uh, freshman, had this face-to-face -face meeting today after weeks of public feuding, but now the speaker's denying there was ever a problem to begin with. Let's listen. I don't think there ever was any hatchet. Well, she called you downright disrespectful. Well, that's, 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 we're in a political arena. There wasn't a hatchet. There was no hatchet to bury, is what the speaker was saying. She's trying very hard to downplay any infighting. No question about it. Of course, Ocasio-Cortez also suggested that the speaker had, was singling out women of color after the speaker had criticized her vote and other the three other Democratic congresswomen, freshmen, over that immigration, the border spending bill. But nevertheless, the speaker is trying to say that, look, we do have disagreements from time to time, but overall, we're united and we're fighting the White House here, and that's what we need to keep our focus on. And she needs to make that case of course, because they're heading into a six-week recess and they want to project unity. But, of course, you look under the uh, surface and things are a little bit more complicated than it seems. Rihanna? <laughs> they sure are. As always, Manu Raju, thank you so much. And here to talk this over now, we have CNN legal analyst Kerry Cordero and Washington Post congressional reporter Karen Demersion. So, uh, Kerry, we just heard from Chairman Nadler that they've told the courts the committee uh, is requesting information from the Mueller investigation, not just as normal oversight, but as part of their Article I authority. How is this different 
uh, from saying that they've opened up an impeachment inquiry and that's how they should be getting information. Well, it, honestly, it's getting harder and harder to distinguish between the work that the committee is doing in their capacity of their overall rule of law oversight investigation and what they might be doing if they actually technically said now we're conducting an impeachment inquiry because what they're doing today, they're going to court to try to get unsealed some of the grand jury information that was in the Mueller report, which, by the way, is a really small percentage of the information that's in the report. And then next week, they're going to go to court to and try to enforce the subpoena against witness Don McGahn, which is really goes to one of the most important fact patterns in the report demonstrating obstructive conduct on the part of the president. Nadler has this method that he can take, right, Karin? He can introduce articles of impeachment in committee. He's at odds with the speaker on how he wants to proceed. She doesn't want to move forward on impeachment, at least not yet, but maybe not at all. He is pressing to do it. If he did that in committee, how much chaos would this throw the Democratic caucus into? Well, you just saw Nancy Pelosi appearing with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to show this sign of unity, right? We assume that she already is unified with the two chairmen of the most powerful committees going after this three, frankly, uh, Adam Schiff on Intel, Jerry Nadler on Judiciary, and Elijah Cummings on the Oversight Committee. There, there were talks very at the very, very beginning of this that maybe there would be some turf wars and infighting and, and, and lack of unified strategy, and they have really made a very, very concerted effort to dispel all of that and present a unified front. If they don't look like they have a unified front, that makes it much, much, much easier for supporters of the president to say, what the heck is going on here? What are you doing? And to say, if you don't even have the support of your speaker and you're going to try to get impeachment to get out of committee and onto the floor, good luck. The Congresswoman Jackie Speer, who's on House Intel, this is what she said about the timeline for impeachment. If we don't take action mm -hmm. uh, come September 1st, then we should just shut it down because we're not going to be able to do anything at all. Oh. I feel strongly that we should, uh, but I think we're running out of time. Speaker Pelosi, Karen, said she's not trying to run out the clock. But make no mistake, she's not at this point moving towards impeachment. And there is a clock, and it is ticking very loudly. There is a clock, exactly. You get into 2020, you get start to get too close to the election, it doesn't look like it's actually an impeachment proceeding on the merits anymore, even if it is by that point by Pelosi's assessment. So really, they have the end of this year. They have this fall, basically. And then if they get into the beginning of next year, it's going to look like a politically craven type of a move to people who might have supported them otherwise. And then Nad uh, Jerry Nadler is saying right now that a win in court next week to enforce a subpoena for White House counsel, uh, former White House counsel Don McGahn, is going to, quote, open, open up the floodgates for more subpoenas. Well, I think uh, because Don McGahn, because he was White House counsel, the White House has the strongest arguments in terms of being able to exert executive privilege over McGahn's testimony. So I think he's the heart, he's both the most important, potentially post one of the most important witnesses for the committee to get because he's so central to one of the strongest fact patterns on obstruction. At the same time, he's also the hardest witness to get because he was the White House counsel. If the courts can go with, uh, if the courts rule in favor of the House on McGahn, I think all of the other witnesses are going to be e easier to get. All right. Fact check true, you say, for Jerry Nadler, that this opens up the, f the floodgates. Uh, and Karin, what did you make of the speaker trying to downplay? I mean, you, you said here she is painting this picture of unity with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she was basically saying there was, there was no hatchet to bury, even though Manu made it very clear that the things that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez raised about the speaker were pretty serious. We saw the hatchet out in full form, both on Twitter and in Pelosi's public statements behind that same podium. Maybe it wasn't a sharpened hatchet, but there was definitely something there that had to be addressed. That's why they did this. And look, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez does not control a major, major faction of the Democratic Party in Congress, but what she does control is public sentiment in, in great regard. And that has effects both for the 2020 campaign, which Pelosi's still the top Democrat in office, and remember, she's looking to the public to determine if there's actually a groundswell behind her of sentiment before she steps into this impeachment arena and other matters too. So she needs the people to be with her and Ocasio can punch above her weight when it comes to how much people out there and in areas of the Democratic Party they want to win over are paying attention to what happens in D.C. Definitely. And it just sort of is striking this image, Karin, that we saw um, of the speaker who has been around the block for so long mm -hmm. and this freshman congresswoman. This is, I mean, this is, it's a striking situation that is happening up there where Nancy Pelosi is having to deal with the youngsters. Yeah, it's a striking situation. It tells you that there is a 
power that exists in this newest generation, this new class that's entered Congress and of the most diverse Congress that you've yet seen. Um, and either this is a, a wake-up call to the older generation that they have to kind of govern a little bit differently, or seen from a more positive light, maybe it's good that you can kind of have a unification across all generations of the Democratic Party. Now, if they can sustain that in a way that where their people aren't talking about hatchets to bury, then that'll work well for them. But, Karen, yeah. Carrie, thank you so much to both of you.